Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Martin Brooks about body language decoder using awareness of body language to build rapport and influence. Martin Brooks, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us all the way from across the pond over in the UK. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah, so it's morning for me, evening for you. I'm thrilled to have the chance to chat with you today, and we're going to be exploring body language and how we can utilize body language to build rapport and influence as leaders, and also how we can recognize the signs of body language um, so we can better understand how we're interacting and communicating with people around us uh, and how others are communicating with us. Because so much of the communication process happens not through verbal communication, but through the nonverbal and the body language types of communication that occur. So we're going to unpack all of that, talk about how we can do that more effectively to be more effective and influential leaders as we lead out in our organizations and on our teams. As we get started, I wanted to share Martin's bio with everybody. Martin Brooks, an experienced communication coach and trainer, and in his consultancy practice, he applies his expertise in the reading of body language to help clients better understand others, as well as communicate more effectively. His body language analysis has been aired on the BBC, LBC Radio, and the Discovery Channel. His new product, Body Language which decoder includes 50 illustrated cards that reveal what others are really thinking. I think that's so fun. Uh, You can tell us all about that. Um, Anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation further? No, just that, you know, my my focus has always been on helping people be more effective as, as leaders, as salespeople, as presenters, as communicators. And what is it they could do differently in order to be more effective? So that's, that's kind of my focus. Yeah, and it's a good focus. We all need it, right? And there's so much time and energy that goes into uh, verbal communication. You're, you're, you know, if you're in a leadership role, you're, you're in front of people, you're making presentations, you're trying to mm-hmm. inspire and influence and motivate, and you're having performance conversations, you're doing all these things. And there's all this verbal stuff. We also talk about um, written communication and how important that is. And not to take away from any of that, because of course, mm-hmm. verbal communication and written communication is super important. We need to be effective at it. Uh, we need to hone that skill. But so much of the messaging that we communicate to others doesn't happen through the written word or the spoken word. It happens through body language, facial expressions, <laughs> like all these nonverbal components, and which means we can really, if we're not careful, we can really short circuit our own ability to be effective, uh, yeah. even if we're saying and doing all the right things, but we're, we're, we're conveying these kind of underlying messages to people around us without even realizing it yeah i think a big part of it that of course content is really important what you're going to say to the troops motivating the troops if you're in a sales presentation you know communicating convincingly to your potential customer of course that is and they will hear that content they will see the words the facts the figures but then they have to ask themselves a question do i believe it <laughs> do i buy into it now, there, the content itself is not enough. So we're looking very much at the individual. 
and going, am I getting those nonverbal signs that would back up, that would assert, that can give me confidence in what is being portrayed? Because do I believe it? Do I buy into it? I love the, rap, the rapper Chuck D had this wonderful uh, uh, quote. He said, uh, in order to people to buy from you, they have to buy into you. Do I like you or do I trust you? Can I work with you? you know, whether that's in a sales environment or certainly in a leadership environment. You know, the true leaders don't need, aren't behind people kicking them to go forward. They're leading and they don't even need to look over their shoulder because they know their team is right behind them. They've bought into them. They're not doing it because they have to because they've bought into them. So the leaders really need to understand that and really need to be able to communicate in a way that can assist that buy-in and not give out say one thing with their words, but then their body language say something completely different. And then people at the receiving end are going, mm, confusion because I'm seeing this, but I'm hearing that. And these, these don't mesh. And what we, we talk about congruency, does the body language, does the voice and does the words, do they all line up? Do they all align to give that consistent message? And if it's not, that's when people start to think, not so sure those doubts come in supply there's a lack of buy-in there's a lack of leadership and then that shows in performance yeah yeah well said and you've already started to lay out you know some of those classic types of nonverbal cues um, but i'm wondering if you can walk us through uh, more of like the most common pitfalls people tend to fall into when it comes to the the nonverbal uh, communication uh, and how that might inadvertently negatively impact you know, the trust issues and really the overall power dynamics and team dynamics going on within our organization. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I've seen a lot, particularly in the virtual world, you know, so the communicating over Zoom or any other platform is that, is that well, it's like, we're not face to face. Therefore, does body language really matter? You know, and even this whole should have camera on or camera off debate. And just makes me despair completely because yes, the pandemic has changed a lot of things and communicating is always evolving. But at the end of the day, what is human beings primary sense? It's our sight. It's what we can see. Now, our core psychology is not, is not rapidly evolving. The, 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 it's not B to B or B to C. It's P to P. It's person to person. And we need to see that physical science. So if somebody is saying, for example, let's get into a little bit more detail say, well, this is what we really need to do. And there's the, a positive affirmative nod, for example. That's, that, that's one thing. And the animation, you know, if people are really excited, they expect to see a more animated face. They expect to see more animated gestures. And of course, that will follow through into how the voice sounds, because uh, one of my favorite phrases is motion drives emo uh, emotion. So if you are expressing yourself like this, using your hands, using your face, that will translate into the tonality of your, your voice and the passion and enthusiasm and excitement that you want to come through, that you want your team to feel, to go out there and face the challenges that they have to face. So it's that realization of what are some of the things that my team, my customers, my uh, employees need to see from me. And even though we're maybe just on a little you know, rectangle of Zoom, it's still so important. I even argue it's more important because it's easier for people to disengage. It's easier for people to be on a, on a Zoom call and just, you know, you know, just off, off screen, just to be kind of checking their, their emails or whatever, because you can't see that. So it's a greater temptation. So we need to make a higher effort to keep people engaged, to keep people interested. How do we do that? Well, don't ignore our primary sense, which is our, our sight, what people are seeing. I believe that's so important. And there, I mean, there are valid reasons why someone may choose to have their camera off in a meeting, or at least for a time. But what you're suggesting is maybe our default should be rather than just automatically having the camera off, our default should be having it on. And then if we need to, we turn it off for a time and then turn it back on. So we can have that face-to-face, -face, even when we're doing it virtually. Um, something else I've noticed too, even pre-pandemic, uh, and it's certainly still the case in face-to-face -face meetings, is it's become so common for people to just be sitting around, say, a big conference table with their laptops. And so they're in the same room together. They're all around mm -hmm. each other. 
but it's almost as if they're not because they're just kind of head down doing their stuff and someone's up front speaking and people might kind of be paying attention, not really. And every now and then there's just comments and stuff, but it's not, there's not really connection or engagement there either. And so yeah. my suspicion is you would suggest, okay, when it's time to communicate, it's time to like, you know, look up from your computer <laughs> yeah. and, and actually be with in, in, and respond to in, in real time to the people that are around you. And, and see those other messages that, that you would literally miss if you're not looking. Look, let's be serious about this. Those are human beings cannot multitask particularly well. There are reasons why there are laws against texting and driving. Okay, there's a reason for that. We can't do those two things at the same time. That's why there's a law against it. We cannot possibly be reading an email from somebody in a computer and paying attention to all of the messages that they're giving out in terms of their voice, their words, and their body language. Let's just call it as it is. You just can't. So if you're going to choose to be paying attention to a screen rather than paying attention to the person that's speaking, the price is going to be there. You're going to be missing out on valuable information. And, and also think about this, you know, we're, we're communicating. Think about what that feels like to the person who's speaking, right? Think about that. Now, imagine you're in a room and there's 10 people in the meeting room and you're speaking. Nine people are looking at their computer screens. Three of them are actually typing and replying, but there's one person in the room who's hanging off your every word paying attention, nodding. When you, when you say something, this is really concerning. They go, they, you know, they, they mirror that emotion. You know, who are they going to feel more connected to? Who are they going to feel more has got their back? Who are they going to feel like, you know, if there's somebody I want to give extra time and attention to, who's it going to be? It's a simple question. So don't do that. Don't put yourself at a competitive disadvantage. Never mind missing all of those other, other messages. You know, put the damn computer away. Close it. Give that person that eye contact. Give that person your, your full attention. What Bill Clinton used to say, his three-word strategy was, be here now. If you're going to have a conversation with them, clear everything else away and zone in on them. And that was one of his key tools and techniques and how he built incredible rapport with people who had actually one-to-one -one with him. And I've met uh, and talked to a number of people who have, who have been with Clinton, and they just said that his ability to do that, to be able to tune into the person in front of them and ignore all the other chaos that's going on around them, just made them feel special. And that was one of his communication gifts. If it works for Clinton, as a controversial a character as he was, then it can work in business. Just give people that focus, give people that attention. You learn a lot more, you build better relationships, and you get a much better understanding of what's going on. Yeah, Clinton's a good example. He's very well known for that, right? He, um, mm. he really does have that rapport. And because of that, people feel seen, they feel heard, they feel important. And, and they just give more attention and there's more buy-in, there's more connection and yep. all of that connection then leads to better uh, commitment, higher levels of commitment, better outcomes. So if, we're, if I'm talking about within my organization and I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm having a one-on-one -on -one with a team member, but I'm like kind of checking my phone off to the side. Do they feel important? Do they feel valued? Do they feel like you actually care about them? No, I mean, you may actually really care about them. You may, mm. you know, really desire to help them, but that act, even if it's just for a moment, even, you know, your, your phone buzzes and you like for five seconds, you go over and you look at it, that act is going to undo a lot of the other efforts you've made to try to show them that they're valuable and important to you and that you're trying to help them. So yeah. we, we, we just can't ignore those things. We, we may think, oh, it's not a big deal that they'll recognize and understand um, it, the, the power of those observations though is so strong that even, even if you, you say, um, I'm sorry, I just checked my phone and they say, no, 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 it's fine. Guess mm. what? It's not fine. Not fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, no, we're just being polite. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy. Courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. 
All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations. Check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Absolutely, I I, I completely compare compare, and even even with with friends now, we we you know when I get together now we, now we are getting together with friends. We go again. We actually make we actually turn our phones off, uh, you know, and, and put them away so they're completely out of sight. So we can we can reconnect because it's it is you know your your Trump which we there's always that temptation to multitask, you know to be do, doing lots of things and what we feel what we do is we fail at everything rather than conceding at one thing, and that's what good communicators know. Look, forget multitasking. Do one thing. Be here now and do it really well. And as a leader, as a salesperson, as a communicator, actually gives you a competitive advantage that you can just give peace and somebody that fit that visual focus attention and, and buy-in yeah awesome so we need to pay attention and, and actually i wanted to just comment too you mentioned even in the face-to-face meetings um, where people are, are head down and you know typing on their computer or whatever i think not only are they missing um you know all the nonverbal cues that could be actually super important as they're trying to just understand the politics around, you know, not, not just the, the raw facts of whatever's being presented, but actually understanding um, people's commitment buy-in to the message and how it's going to impact with all the other initiatives and strategic planning. Like there's all these components, right. That are unspoken, but are influenced. And so mm-hmm. not only are you missing the nonverbal cues, you're missing, um, the verbal as well. So, I mean, being distracted in a meeting and trying to multitask is really dumb because it's, it, you're really, what you're, what you're uh, communicating to everyone around you is that this meeting is not actually that important. I have more important things to do, better uses of my time. Um, and you're showing that through your actions. And so uh, I get it. Leaders are busy. You're getting thrown into like all these meetings. You have to go from thing to thing to thing, and you're still trying to get your work done and you're still trying to respond to questions and and put out fires and like i get that and you feel Mm. this pull and that it's a hard thing to balance and to to strike that you know kind of a balance but man you got to learn to be present where you're at otherwise uh you're 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 just going to end up being ineffective in like every area (laughs) yeah and and, and instead you know I get it. Like you may, you may have someone trying to contact you and needing your immediate attention and you don't actually, you don't, you're not able (laughs) to see what's happening. (laughs) Yeah, no, for, for those who are listening and not watching, you just, you just, uh, demonstrated, you just started to hold up your phone and pretend like you're texting and it immediately like gets me out of my thought process. Right. Immediately. Right. Straight away straight away. And so we, we just, we just need to pay attention to that and and be with who we, where we're at, focus on the task at hand, um, be with others around us in real time, man, when we can do that, we can, we can wait half an hour for the meeting to get done to then go respond to that question of an employee or, or whatever. We don't need to interrupt things constantly. So, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe we're starting to beat a dead horse here, but, um, but I just see it so constantly and I'm sure I do it as well. Like, <laughs> I think, I think we fall into the trap because we, we just feel pulled in so many directions. Um, but if we can practice that self-discipline, it's gonna, gonna help us. Um, another thing that I thought we could talk a little bit about is really, our, our nonverbal cues that we give to other people, um, how can we convey confidence that we can be trusted? How can we convey our, our passions, our convictions? How can we 
convey all of that. Now, certainly if we're writing, we can try to be skilled in our writing. If we're speaking, we can practice and rehearse and we can try to be skilled in our speaking. But most of what we're communicating is happening non-verbally. So how can we do those really impactful things in, a, in those non-verbal ways and do it consistently? Mm. Well, I think there's, there, there's two key things. First of all, is, is gain greater awareness of what our nonverbal skills are. And this is the piece of advice that I give to people and they all go, Aah! and that is video record yourself when you're speaking. If you want to get a better sense of how to communicate with people, you got to get a better sense of what you're actually putting out there with your nonverbals as well. So the next Zoom meeting you have, record it. The next presentation you give in the bed in the boardroom, you know, have a camera in the room. You don't you don't need you can do it with your smartphone these days. You don't need a big camera uh, and start getting better awareness of how you communicate. Big part of my career as a, as a presentation coach uh, uh, with leaders and, and senior salespeople has been not necessarily refining the message, but what a message is your body language giving out? You know, you're, you're talking about passion and enthusiasm, but you're standing there with your hands in your pockets. I mean, come on, that doesn't convey passion and enthusiasm. Or a completely blank order. face, right? Or a completely <laughs> blank face, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, number, the number of senior leaders who I've coached whose opening line has gone something along the lines of, we can't tell you how excited we are by this new innovation. And you just think, oh my God, how, how long have we got? You know, <laughs> if that's our starting point, we're, we're in big trouble. So the first thing is get a better idea of what, what your baseline is. What do you currently do? And, you know, because that's self-reflection, you, you'll start, you, you'll probably be like most people, like I am, I'm constantly critiquing my own behavior going, yeah, don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. But then the, the second part is, what do you do instead? What do confident people do? So I've got a whole section in Body Language Decoder on confidence gestures. And that, that's one of them. That's called the parallel hand chop. You know, you see people do this constantly. Uh, and Joe Biden's recent State of the Union speech, he was, this, this is a constant thing that, that he does a number of times to assert that position. Also, uh, b- b- Previous president, Barack Obama, one of his favorite confidence gestures was what I call the pinch of salt. This is the key thing that we need to do. We need to get that across. And of course, Clinton's famous hand confidence gesture was known as the, the thumb of power. So you put the thumb into the crook of the forefinger and then you bring it down. This is why we need to do that. This is so important. So these are well, the, these two, certainly the, the thumb of power and the pinch of salt, these are softened fist gestures. So they're not aggressive, you know, like the, like the fist or the point, because again, a point is one finger away from a fist. So it's like the meaning is pretty clear, isn't it? It's an or else, you know. So this softened fist, that a pinch of salt, this is why it's important, because it's softer then the assertion and the confidence is still there without the aggressiveness. Similarly with the thumb of power, with the, the, the thumb resting in the crook of the forefinger, but there's a softened fist there presented to the audience. So the chop, the pinch of salt, the uh, thumb of power, these are three hand confidence gestures that we can make to really assert, you know, we know our stuff, we're confident in what we're saying, and it, I want to make it easier for my audience to buy into, you know, me and what I'm selling, whether that's a leadership vision or a product or a project that I want people to buy into. Yeah, I, I think those are great. And I think also about myself, you know, I, I've done a lot of that in the past where I've recorded myself and I'm not like a, I'm not a naturally charismatic speaker or presenter. Uh, I've learned over time to be effective. I think people tend to respond well to me. But, you know, it's, it's been a learned process and I'm still not as good as I could be, uh, certainly. And, and one of the things that I've struggled with is, is um, like the energy in my face and in my voice uh, mm-hmm. and just the, so I, I, not even what I'm saying, but, but the, the, the facial expressions uh, and just the energy in my voice and not speaking in monotone and things like that, right? So mm-hmm. there's intonation and tone and like all these different things that you layer on to how yeah. we're, we're conveying a message um, that, again, will inadvertently undermine what we're trying to accomplish if we're not careful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it, But these are skills we can learn. Now, some people, yeah. it comes pretty naturally to them. 
uh, good for them. That's awesome. The vast, major- <laughs> the vast majority of us, though, that's not the case. You have to work at it, just like you work at learning to play the piano or the guitar or whatever, right? You got to practice, record yourself, watch it, critique it, practice some more. Um, practice makes, uh, I, I've never liked the term practice make perfect, but practice practice makes better. <laughs> yeah, and, for sure. And, and ultimately, um, you know, you're going to be better equipped. To, in, yeah. when you're in those, especially when you're in those, those high pressure, um, you know, really important situations. Yeah. I mean, this sort of thing about where's your, where's your natural baseline that, that self-awareness is really important because that drives then what it is that you need to do next. And, and our self-awareness is a starting point. That's why people hire me. They go, well, I think I'm being charismatic and engagement. Am I? And I go, Hmm, how do I break this to you? <laughs> you know, so for example, I mean, you talked about your voice. I mean, you've got a great natural voice to read bedtime stories and or be a professional hypnotist. You know, it's lower, it's gravelly, you know, it's got that real credibility to it. So that's, so you've got, a, you would have a fantastic career reading bedtime stories on, on audio files. You ever need an alternative career. There well, that, you that's, go. that's great advice. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> However, like you say, for that passion, for that enthusiasm, for that energy, if that's what you want to transmit, then noticing that your kind of range is kind of down there, you go, I need to be more expressive. I need to bring my voice up. And the fascinating thing you'll find is that if you move your body more, your voice will follow. M- motion drives emotion. It'll actually change your voice. The, the mind, the voice, the body, they're not all separate things. They all interconnect and inter-influence each other. So you may want to think about then using your hands more to help your voice become more animated. It's very difficult for the voice to animate if the body's still. So that, that's, that's one of the things that I've always done in my professional coaching career, where people are, what are the key things that they need to do differently, and then how they can actually do that. So then to come back to your point, it's not just about random practice. They need, they need to know what they need to practice, where they are, and where they want to get to, and how to bridge that gap in between the two. So that's where it's focused practice after some sometimes uncomfortable constructive feedback shall we say uh, but that's what they come to me for you know they don't, they don't yeah. come to me for nice words they come to me how do i move forward yeah yeah well martin this has just been fascinating so many great uh, pieces of advice here that i know i'm gonna uh, really carefully consider i encourage listeners to do the same um, before we wrap up for today i just wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you and find out more about your work and then give us a final word on the topic for today okay thank you well, best place to find me is on the on the internet. My website, successthroughimpact.com. It's got loads of free tools and techniques and videos. I'm quite active on LinkedIn. So search me Martin Brooks on LinkedIn. You can find me there. Of course, Body Language Decoder is available on Amazon. You can go find that on Amazon and order that. Get your 50 cards to help you figure out what people are really thinking. And in terms of my final word, I'd really say body language is the, the clues in the name, body language, it communicates a whole other language alongside what you're saying and how you're saying. And if you're really interested in being a better communicator, better able to convince, influence and motivate people, you need to pay attention to what your body is saying, as well as what other people's bodies are saying to you. So raise that awareness, focus on it, find some things to, to, to move forward. That'll be my final word. Perfect. Thank you, Martin. It's been a pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Martin and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer than Indigo Leadership, the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. 
The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. alchemy of truly remarkable leadership, ordinary everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years with increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition. The average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.